Hello and welcome to Popcorn Mumbles, the podcast where we dig into the back catalog to select a film or television show to rewatch. I'm your host, Cody Nestor. Alongside me is my co-host, Todd Heal. What's up, guys? Just a reminder, the video version of today's episode is available on YouTube. If you enjoy the show, please consider following us on your podcast platform of choice and subscribing to our YouTube channel. This week, we've selected two films, 2012's The Hunger Games and its 2013 sequel, The Hunger Games Catching Fire. In what was once North America, the capital of Penem maintains its hold on its 12 districts by forcing them each to select a boy and a girl called tributes to complete uh, to compete in a nationally televised event called the Hunger Games. Every citizen must watch as the youths fight to the death until only one remains. District 12 tributes Katniss Everdeen, Jennifer Lawrence, has little to rely on other than her hunting skills and sharp instincts in an arena where she must weigh survival against love, Todd. Oh. <laughs> the Hunger Games was released on March 23rd, 2012. On a budget of $78 million, it made $695 million. Okay. It has a Rotten Tomatoes score of 84% and an audience score of 81%. The Hunger Games Catching Fire was released on November 22nd, 2013. On a budget of $130 million, it made $865 million. Go get it, Hunger Games. It has a Rotten Tomatoes score of 90% and an audience score of 89%. So, Todd, let's discuss these films. Spoilers are ahead. So, Todd, what is your history with these films? I only remember seeing these. I think we saw all four of these at the theater. I'm pretty sure me and you did. Am I am I wrong? I think you're wrong on that because I've never actually seen The Last Mockingjay Part 2. Okay, I'm I think wrong. I, I think get I, used to it, folks. Yeah, <laughs> I think I only seen these once they come out on like home release. If I'm not mistaken, maybe that's me too. I was mistaken. Man. It's going to happen a lot. It's, <laughs> it's time, folks. It's time for the home. But I, I I only saw these maybe one time, whenever it was theatrically or or home release. Probably home release. But uh, I. I'm at that point in my life where I completely almost forgot everything that happened in them. So it's like all new to me again. <laughs> yeah, I mean, same. It's been so long since I've seen them. I mean, I've seen both films previously and, like I said, Mockingjay Part 1. I just never got around to whatever reason to watch Mockingjay Part 2. I think it, I was waiting for it to come out physically, I want to say, and I just never went back after it did. Yeah. Um, so, Todd, walk us through the opening of The Hunger Games. So as Cody mentioned, uh, as punishment for past rebellions against the capital, in which District 13 was actually destroyed, uh, one boy and girl from each of the 12 remaining districts, aged uh, from 12 to 18, is uh, selected in a lottery, which I believe they call a reaping, Mm -hmm. to represent their district in the capital in what is known as the Hunger Games. Uh, And this, which will be the 74th edition of the Hunger Games, Katniss Everdeen actually volunteers to take the place of her sister, who was originally chosen as the tribute. Yeah, Prim, her sister. Right, and apparently, if you volunteer, that's you know that's it. You're going. There's no, <laughs> there ain't no overriding that. Like, uh, sorry, takes these backsies. <laughs> like, no, no, no. takes these backsies. Anybody with the balls to volunteer, hey, go ahead. Exactly. <laughs> uh, also, the male tribute is uh, Peta Malark, uh, and they travel to the capital along with uh, Effie Trinket, their chaperone, and a, a mentor named Hamish Abernathy, who is the last living winner from District 12. Yeah. Well, you kind of g- you get into a little bit up here, but we'll get into some of these names as we go on, Todd. Yeah. Boy. <laughs> uh, my first thought when I was watching the opening scenes of this film were again, uh, again were uh, – it's, uh, it's just shaky cam city, my guy. It's just right off the bat, the camera's just all over the place. Here. Right. It's a bit much for me right up front. I mean, I'm not saying it's bad. It's just a bit much. Yeah. Uh, something I think that these first two films that we watch do well, though, is world building. Like, you just, you know, essentially, you see how everyone in District 12 kind of lives through that little opening scene. You drop right into the world, but you kind of immediately understand what's uh, what's going on and what the stakes are. Exactly, yeah. Uh, I really love the good uh, the goodbye scene between Katniss and her mother. You know, Katniss is her mother's kind of like emotionally checked out after the death of uh, uh, their father, and Katniss is basically like, "I'm about to go get killed in the Hunger Games. Mm-hmm. You have another daughter to take care of. I need you to get your shit together." Right, that like, was cool. Yeah. yeah, it was just a nice little scene. Uh, let's talk about the cast for a second, though. Uh, so, of course, we have Jennifer Lawrence as Katniss Everdeen. She was coming off the back of X Men: First Class, another film that I love, actually. Uh, we have Josh Hutcherson as Peter Malark. Uh, he was coming off Journey to the Mysterious Island with The Rock. 
So, uh, yeah. He's heading up, though. Yeah, he's, he's, <laughs> he, his career was definitely about to take a turn for the better. Uh, we have Liam Hemsworth as Gail Hawthorne. Uh, let's put this to rest, Todd. Who is the best looking Hemsworth? Is it, uh, is it Luke? Is it Chris? Or is it Liam? Uh, it's Chris. I mean, it's he's, he's Thor, for God's it's sake. Definitely, it's definitely <laughs> Chris. Yes, you're right. Uh, we have Elizabeth Banks, like you said, as uh, Effie Trinket. What did you think of her character when you kind of first saw her and throughout this film? Honestly, as I was saying, you know, I forgot about a lot about these movies, but uh, I kind of like this character. Uh, you know, at first you just kind of think she's just like a, a capital type, you know, this uh, drone. Mm -hmm. She's just there to get the tributes from point A to point B, but... By the time you get to the second film, you can kind of see she's starting to have feelings for them. Mm -hmm. uh, she's got, you know, their best thoughts and interests at her heart. Uh, yeah. She buys them little trinkets and all considers them like a group. They're a team. Uh, yeah. I think this might be one of my favorite Elizabeth Banks roles, actually. Better than Rita Repulsa in Power Rangers? hundred times better. <laughs> Hundo. You feeling like a Krispy Kreme donut right now, Todd? <laughs> Uh, one thing about her character, I don't believe her name is even spoken until you get to Catching Fire. She's just there. Right. They don't even say her name until you get to the sequel. Uh, we also have Woody uh, Harrelson as Hamish Abernathy. He's sporting his best Keith Urban wig <laughs> in this film. Um, so pick us up uh, back in the Capitol now, Todd. They've taken uh, Peta and Katniss to the Capitol. Pick us up from there. Uh, so we're back in the capital. Uh, Hamish is trying to get them kind of prepared and ready for the games. Uh, he's trying to drill into their heads how important it is to get uh, sponsorship, to have sponsors on your side. Uh, Which is basically impressing a bunch of rich people so that they send you things uh, via, like, little parachute uh, kind of messenger bottles basically during the game. So yeah, it's like, how wrong is that? <laughs> but still... <laughs> So he's trying to drill that into the skull, you know, you know, you know, put up your best face forward, you know, you know, get these sponsors. They can save your life in this game. Right. Uh, Peter kind of takes that to heart. He goes out there and like drops his, hey, I love Katniss. Yeah. I love her. I've always loved her. And uh, she kind of thinks it's just some shit he's doing just to get the sponsors. But we learn later that, you know, he really does have feelings for her. Yeah, I mean, and here, here's your big plot point that carries into our next film. It's Peter loves Katniss, but does Katniss love Peter? Is it real or is it just for show? Uh, Katniss also has feeling for uh, Liam Hunksworth back at <laughs> District 12. Right. Uh, but is she starting to have strong feelings for PETA as well? Uh, I mean, PETA, we did see him chuck a loaf of bread at her for about 20 feet uh, in the pouring rain just on the ground. So, I mean, isn't that love, Todd? Well, if that's not love, tell me what is. Exactly. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that's, that's a plot point that goes from this film into Catching Fire is – is there is there feelings for each other? Are they real? Are they not? Are they show? Are they just for the to, for the the masses basically to kind of see? Is it is it is it real or not? Is something that kind of stands out through the first two films at right. least. Um, what did you think of uh, the Tooch here, Todd? Uh, Stanley uh, <laughs> Tucci's character of uh, 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 Bean Flickerman or whatever his name is. <laughs> uh, I think it was Caesar Flickerman. Caesar Flickerman. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I call him Bean Flickerman. <laughs> It's just one of those, uh, I mean, it's just that crazy, over-the-top, just scene-chewing. He's got that hair. He's got those, I mean, whiter than friggin' white teeth. Yeah, it's a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of that. Just... It's just the tooch being the tooch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, in the Capitol, we also get introduced to uh, creepy little Toby Jones as Claudius Temple Smith. Yeah, kind of like the co-hosts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Th these names, man. <laughs> they kill me. Uh, we get Wes Bentley in his uh, terrible facial hair as Seneca Crane. He's uh, kind of the head game maker who designs the arenas for the Hunger Games. Kind of looks like the devil on earth or something. Yeah. With that, with that, you know, that facial stuff. Exactly. Wasn't he actually in, wasn't he in Ghost Rider? Didn't he like play, I, I think play he, some he, kind of role there with some kind of weird facial hair I too? I think you're right, yeah. yeah. It's been a while since I've seen that movie too, so don't hold me to it. Uh, we also get Donald, uh, Donald Sutherland as President Snow. He's fantastic as always. Uh, we get Lenny Kravitz as Senna, uh, Katniss's uh, stylist. Senna and his partner Portia are the ones who design Katniss's and Peter's costumes and those fake flames that we see kind of when she rides in, her and Peter ride in during the uh, – kind of chariot, kind of introducing all the tributes. Uh, we see that he's kind of set up those fake flames that kind of come off of her, uh, their, both of their clothings. And uh, that's where Katniss kind of gets the name as the girl on fire. Yeah. 
Uh, so just a little kind of little tidbits here. So uh, apparently Lenny Kravitz was cast for the role of Cena without auditioning. Uh, director Gary Ross was impressed by his brief performance in Precious. Uh, Kravitz learned as much as he could about Jennifer Lawrence through his daughter Zoe Kravitz, who appeared with Lawrence in X Men First Class. Ah. I forget what character she was, but she had like those wings, those little wings or something, didn't she? If I'm I not think, mistaken. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Anyway. Uh, and out of the other tributes, the most notable are probably uh, Amanda uh, Stingberg as Rue, uh, Jack Quaid as Marvel, just because I'm like, hey, it's Jack Quaid. Oh, he's dead. <laughs> uh, and uh, Alexander Ludwig as uh, Ludwig as Cato. Basically, uh, he's like the tribute to beat. He's like your prototypical, like, big, hunky jock, blonde haired, blue eyed, like, you know, I'm the badass. I'm the guy you got to take out. Right. I'm your last foil kind of thing. <laughs> Uh, I thought, once again, that all the setup in the world building before the games was great. You know, kind of the strategy of the games themselves, but also, like you said, kind of how to navigate everything else outside of the games and, I like, the public perception to get sponsorship and all that. All really good stuff. I, I agree, yeah. Uh, so take us through the, the start of the games here, Todd. Uh, you know, the start of these games for me, I mean, they're, they're kind of brutal. I mean, you mm-hmm. got your 12 to 18 just thrown in there together. And uh, that's kind of unfair, folks. <laughs> There's a lot of a lot of kills just right there off the bat. Yeah, it starts at um, you get the starting point is what they call the cornucopia. Yeah, it's like this kind of building, like in the center of the arena. And uh, Hamish tells Katniss to just once you know once it starts, the cornucopia is going to be a bloodbath, and just to not even go, not try to get a bow, not try to get anything, just don't even engage with it. But of course, she don't listen. She goes for it. But yeah, I was watching it, and I was like, this is kind of more brutal than I remember it being. Like, there's a lot of, like, people just getting dropped left and right, and it's a little bit violent. Like, i I got to give the film credit for that. Uh, so what else do we have as we go forward? Uh, let's see. We have uh, – so Katniss, she's kind of trying to stay away from everybody, but uh, Seneca Crane again, Wes Bentley and his weird facial hair, he's kind of, like, trying to push her – back towards the rest of the tribute. So he kind of sends like a forest fire her way to kind of drive them towards her. A uh, bunch of the, what they call the careers, which are like uh, tributes that have kind of volunteered or been there over and over. That's kind of made a career out of being in the Hunger Games. They kind of form a little group and PETA kind of joins with them or seemingly joins and kind of allies with them. Yeah. So she kind of gets pushed out by that, that forest fire and like fireballs, I guess, being shot at her too in a yeah, way. Yeah, fireballs, yeah. She kind of gets an injury on her on her leg, and she ends up kind of like going and kind of fleeing from that group of um, careers by kind of like fleeing up into a tree. Um, we see that uh, PETA kind of tells them, like, let's just like kind of wait her out, kind of buying her time. Um, and the next morning she sees that uh, Rue from District 11, which is one of our other uh, kind of main characters for a little bit, uh, she's kind of drawing her attention to like a nest of – uh, I forget what they're called. They're called tracker jackers. Yeah, that's they're it. a uh, <laughs> genetically modified kind of venomous wasp. So there's like she kind of points her to like a nest of those. So Katniss kind of uses her knife, kind of saw the tree branch because all the careers are kind of waiting her out and they're kind of sleeping under. Her. So can she kind of uses those uh, her knife to kind of cut the branch away and drops those tracker jackers on their head basically and. Uh, Boy, it really takes out that one girl. Yeah, it's true. Conveniently the one with the bow. Yeah, it kills her. She's she must yeah. have been allergic. Yeah, she gets uh that she gets uh, one of those sleepaway camp bees nests. Yeah. There's a lot more uh wasp, a lot more bees in that yeah, nest than, than what sleepaway was in sleepaway camp. camp. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um Katniss kind of she gets stung by doing this herself, so those tracker jackers, they can be fatal, but they can also cause like dizziness and hallucination. So Peter tells her to kind of get out of there, and she's kind of having, like, hallucinations. She's kind of really messed up and kind of, I guess, ends up kind of passing out. Rue finds her and kind of helps her kind of recover, puts, like, these kind of plants on her wounds and on her on her, uh, on her her bites and stuff, on her bites and stuff, I should say, and they kind of become pretty much friends and allies at yeah. that point. Uh, so this is where we see that uh, after uh, Katniss and Rue kind of get up and get together and start forming a plan. You kind of see that the careers have kind of got a stockpile of supplies near the cornucopia. It's just like this big giant supply uh, 
pyramid basically of just boxes on boxes with food and weapons and items or whatever for the for the game. So Katniss and Rue kind of come up with a plan to kind of destroy it. Uh, they uh, Katniss destroys the supplies um, and the stockpile. She kind of there's they've they've set mines all around it. So there's a, a bag of apples hanging off the side of one of the boxes. She uses her bow to kind of like knock the uh, the bag of apples free, and it kind of just explodes all those mines around. Right. And while she's doing that, Rue is kind of giving her a distraction, but kind of lighting fires into into the forest. And uh, after that, she blows up the stockpile, and oh boy, here we go, Todd. Uh oh. What what happens after that? So uh, Katniss realizes that not all those fires got set, so she heads back into the woods to kind of check on Rue, and uh, she's been captured, and uh, she's actually in a trap, and she's trying to free her, and one of those careers kind of runs up behind them. It's Jack Quaid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, Jack Quaid. Goodbye. Chucks a spear right into the center of Rue. Uh, Katniss turns around, you know, kills him with an arrow, but yep. uh, it's too late for Rue. It's too late, uh, too late for Rue, yeah. So she kind of comforts her. She sings to her a little bit, um, and after Rue dies, she kind of uh, takes flowers from around and kind of adorns her body with the flowers. And the that image and then her kind of using that, like, you know, three-fingered, uh, kind of salute uh, toward but the cameras. It starts causing some riots back in Rue's district or District 11. But yep. poor Rue. Yeah. Poor Rue. She deserved better. She did. She, she did. was too little to be there to start with. Yeah, exactly. Too innocent for this world. Uh, so President Snow uh, warns uh, Crane that he's displeased about the unrest. Um, you know, the game's purpose is to is to give uh, hope to kind of quell future revolution. Uh, Hamish kind of persuades Crane to change the rules to allow two winners uh, to be able to to have two winners from the same district uh, and. That kind of suggestion uh, from Hamish will say, like, if you do this, that'll kind of, like, pacify the crowds, kind of calm everything down. If you let, you know, you have this kind of blossoming love story angle between Katniss and Peeta, if you allow there to be two winners, if you allow them both to have a chance to living, that'll kind of pacify some of the public, you know, unrest, I guess, if you will. Right. So uh, Katniss searches for, and she finally finds Peeta. He's, like, down like, hey, I'm a rock. <laughs> hey, Katniss, I'm a rock. <laughs> You know, he blended in, man. Yeah. So, could you explain how Peta uh, kind of made himself look like part of the landscape there, Todd. That was some kind of trick he had picked up uh, during their training. He was working on his arm. I remember making it look like a tree. Yeah, he said um, he he worked in a he worked in a bakery back in District yeah, Twelve, that was it. and he said he used to decorate the cakes back in District Twelve. So you do see him in those those kind of training scenes earlier. Like he's able to like make his arm like paint it to where it looks like it can blend into like the tree. So he like paints himself to basically look like a rock, and then just covers himself and lays there. And he's like, "Hey, I'm a rock." He falls back on his old bakery training. Yeah, exactly. Uh, who to thunk, right? Uh, so um, pretty much at this point, uh, Peta is, he was injured at some point during all this. Um, Katniss kind of takes into a cave and they're kind of being watched by, you know, the the cameras and things like that. And again, you're seeing that, that budgeting kind of, you know, love story. Is it real or is it not? In these yeah. scenes, it does seem like it's starting to, she really does have feelings for him. But again, we'll, we'll see more of that in the second film a little bit. But, um, she needs to go get medicine for Peta. He tells her not to, but she does indeed go out and get it. She gets attacked by, uh, I think her name is Clove. I think that's correct. I think yeah. uh, it's the girl with, like, throwing knives. We didn't really talk about her, but she's just a crazy girl with throwing knives from one of the districts. <laughs> right. Um, she gets saved by um, Thresh, who is, he is the other tribute. He's the, he's the male tribute from District 11 that was along with Rue. So since she, she helped Rue and was so respectful and everything she did for Rue, uh, he kind of tells her, you know, one time, you get one. Yeah. You get one, cat. It's actually I, one for Rue. Yeah, I killed I killed this girl for you. I saved your life. You get one because of Rue. If I seize you again, it's, I kill it's, you. It's, I kill you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, so, Todd, take it from here. Tell us how the Hunger Games uh, wraps up. Uh, so while hunting for food, Katniss kind of hears the cannon go off, and she's fearing the worst for Peta. Uh, she kind of races back to find him and realizes he's collected a bunch of what they call nightlock berries, mm -hmm. which are highly poisonous. Right. And then they come upon another tribute that had actually, a female tribute that had eaten some of those, I guess kind of mimicking what uh, Peta was doing. Yeah, Foxface. Yeah, Fo that yeah, was it, Foxface. And about that time, uh, the game maker drops in those uh, genetically altered beasts, 
They look like big ass pit bulls. Yes, actually, they look they, like yeah. that. They look like one of those uh, one of those dog uh, those mutant dogs from the Angley Hulk movie. That's oh yeah, kind of what they look like yeah. to me in a way. I hadn't thought about that. They look yeah. good though. They look fine. There's nothing wrong with the effects. They just like they're like weird kind of hybrid mutant pit bull looking thing. Yeah. Which, I mean, they, they look good. So they winds up driving uh, Peta and Katniss back to the cornucopia along with the only last remaining other tribute, which was Cato. Yep. And he kind of gets the drop on Peta, gets him in a headlock to where Katniss can't draw down on the bow. Uh, Peta kind of gives the old, just shoot him in the hand. <laughs> right. So she gives him a pop in the hand with an arrow. Uh, that gives Peta a chance to get the drop on him, throw him off. Katniss, I think, actually puts an arrow in him before he ever hits the ground. You know, yeah. it's kind of spare him from the beast ripping him apart. Yeah, he's like down there on the ground, and she just kind of ends his suffering pretty much. Yeah. So they make it back down to the ground, and they change the rules one more time on them. Yeah, of course. Saying that now there can only be one tribute win the games, and uh, Peter's like, hey, just, it should be you. <laughs> it's you. gotta be me. <laughs> you know, he, he pulls a Justin Timberlake, <laughs> and it's like, it's gotta be me, Katniss. <laughs> You know, it should be you. You've got your mother, your sister, your family. I've got nothing. Yeah, I've got nothing. I can I can decorate myself real well, but yeah, I can, that's outside all I got. of that, I, I can't do anything. And she's like, no, no, we're going to totally F this thing up for him. We're yeah. going to eat these berries. We're going to Romeo and Juliet this yeah. thing. And, you know, that'll show them. And yeah, exactly. Before they can do that, the game maker breaks in like, hey, 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 we got <laughs> dual winners here, folks. Yeah, exactly. District 12. <laughs> exactly. First time ever. Uh, it is. Uh, let's take back our previous statement. Uh, two winners here, folks. Two, <laughs> two winners. winners. Uh, so, yeah, so they uh, they get they uh, change the rules once again. Katniss and PETA both escape the Hunger Games and are declared the winners of the 74th Annual Hunger Games. Pretty much the last couple things that happens in the movie is uh, President Snow's not too happy with Wes Bentley, uh, <laughs> nor his facial hair. So he kind of presents him, I guess, uh, a choice of uh, how he wants to die, I guess. And there's a, uh, a kind of a, a cup or a bowl full of those nightlock berries kind of presented in front of him. We kind of hear later on in the uh, the second film that he indeed uh, did indeed uh, meet his demise at that point. Yeah. Um. So that's pretty much the end of the Hunger Games. Uh, so, Todd, what were your thoughts after watching uh, the Hunger Games? Uh, after revisiting this, uh, I enjoyed it. You know, I, like I say, uh, you mentioned earlier, I think they did a good job with the world building. I think all the acting in this thing was, you know, top notch. I mean, Woody Harrelson, Elizabeth Banks, uh, they all did great as their characters. Uh, Katniss Everdeen, Jennifer Lawrence. Uh, Got to go down as one of the greatest uh, f uh, female heroes of all time, probably. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I was glad I rewatched it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I second all that. Like, the cast here is, is, is great. There's not a, a bad note. The effects hold out through the entire film. Uh, it's a relatively low-budget film for the time. Obviously, it made its money back in then, so it was very popular. And, yeah, Jennifer Lawrence's Katniss Everdeen definitely probably up there in that, that top-tier list of, you know, uh, fem you know, best female protagonists. I mean, overall, it's a very, very, very solid film to me. Mm -hmm. And I, going back to it, I didn't really... I didn't really remember how I reacted to it or what I thought about it the first time around, but I honestly very much enjoyed going back to it and watching it. Uh, just a couple of notes here I have before we move on to Catching Fire. Uh, so do you remember that scene where uh, Katniss tells Gail, um, well, actually Gail, yeah, she asked Gail how many times his name was in the, the drawing for the reaping, and he's like 42 or something like that. So I, I was reading about it a little bit. So it's not really fully explained why somebody in the film might do that, have mm -hmm. their name in multiple times. Uh, the only hint that you get is when Katniss comes to say her goodbyes and tells her sister Priam not to put her name in anymore because it's not worth getting any extra food. So apparently in the novel, it's explained that putting one's name in an additional time garners the family uh, a tessera, I think is how you say that, or a tessera, which is an additional portion of grain and oil to last for a year. So families experiencing especially terrible deprivation may put their children's name into the drawing more than once in exchange for that small amount of extra food. Just okay. thought that was kind of interesting. Sad. <laughs> <Very> interesting. <laughs> uh, so co-writer and director Gary Ross stated that his decision to go with uh, shaky cam work, as I mentioned before, had a lot to do with the urgency of what's going on to reflect Katniss's point of view. He also mentioned that he wanted to avoid a polished static camera look at all costs, since that would reduce the violence to mere entertainment and be completely contrary to the movie's intention. Well, he succeeded. It's, <laughs> it's very shaky, especially at the beginning. 
Uh, this is the one, uh, only one of the movies in the Hunger Games franchise to be directed by Gary Ross. All the sequels dr- were directed by Francis Lawrence, who had been considered as director of the first film. Second unit director Steven Soderbergh shot much of the District 11 riot scenes. Uh, you familiar with Steven Soderbergh, Todd? That name sounds awfully familiar. Uh, Ocean's Eleven, ah, okay. Logan Lucky, okay, all the Ocean's films, but a lot of the good films. Very good filmmaker. Uh, I didn't hear it. Did you hear uh, a Wilhelm scream in this film? Hmm. Apparently at around one hour and 27 minutes where Katniss cuts off the uh, the tree branch of wasps, apparently you can hear a Wilhelm scream somewhere oh, in there. Oh, okay. But I didn't catch it. Uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson, Alex uh, Pettifer, Josh Hutcherson, Lucas Teal, Nico Tortorella, Alexander Ludwig, Evan Peters, and Hunter Parrish were considered to play Peter Malark. Hutcherson was eventually cast, and then we know Ludwig was a later cast as Cato. Uh, here's one I thought was interesting. John C. Riley was originally in talks to play Hamish before the role went to Woody Harrelson. That would have been kind of sketch for me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Woody Harrelson, he doesn't get a lot of screen time in this, but I think he's really good as Hamish. He's kind of like, he uh, again, he's kind of disillusioned. He's been through it before. He just kind of spends his days as a victor. I mean, after you become a victor, you're kind of enriched in life, and your status right. goes up, you get money, and he's just kind of over it all, and he's just basically a drunk. Yeah, he's but an he old, d- happy drunk. He does a he does a real <laughs> good job with it. I don't, I don't think I love John C. Riley, but I don't think he would have been a fit. Yeah. And last uh, note I have here: composer Danny Elfman left the film due to a re uh, to a scheduling conflict and was replaced by James Newton Howard. I think that is definitely for the benefit of this film. I would say if not, so. it would have just been a lot of trombones. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, listen, Danny Elfman has done some good scores, but in general, not a fan of Danny Elfman. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to our final thoughts and review scores. So we rank films on a 1 to 10 scale. Starting from 1, the ranks are torture. 2 is awful. 3, bad. 4, subpar. 5, mediocre. 6, decent. 7, good. 8, great. 9, amazing. 10, masterpiece. So, Todd, give us your final thoughts and review score for The Hunger Games. As I stated earlier, I'm glad I revisited this property. Uh, I think it was a a good, solid watch, and that's also what my score is, a 7. This is a good, solid movie, and I think you'll enjoy it if you haven't already saw it. Yeah, okay. So speaking as someone who never read the original novels, I can't find any faults with the film. Jennifer Lawrence and the rest of the cast are great. Story is good. The world building is excellent, and the effects hold up. Uh, It's a young adult version of The Running Man. And I mean that in the best way, honestly. Uh, I give The Hunger Games an 8 out of 10, which ranks it as great. Uh, All right, Todd. So let's pick up here. Let's move into Catching Fire. So uh, where do we find our characters at the beginning of Catching Fire? So at the beginning, we see our tributes, uh, Katniss Everdeen and Peter Peter Malark. Pardon me. Peter. (laughs) Oh, Peter. Oh, Peter. Peter Malark are are back home. They're back in District 12. uh, they got material wealth now. They're mm-hmm. doing pretty good, but they're not doing so good. Uh, yeah. Katniss is kind of dealing with some leftover uh, trauma from the experience of going through the games. Uh, Peter's kind of having to deal with the fact that Katniss is just keeping her distance. She don't want to really have anything to do with him. Yep. Uh, and on top of all that, uh, Katniss gets a surprise visit from a surprise visit from old President Snow himself who uh, basically says, you know, you've caused a lot of unrest and uh, uprising in the districts and the capital. Uh, you need to go out on this victory tour, uh, sell this uh, Seeds of Love storyline, yeah. or I was going to kill some of you people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, to kind of quell some of these uprisings, he wants her to kind of sell this narrative that her and Peter are uh, these star-crossed lovers, survivors of the Hunger Games, and they are... Uh, part of the capital and not uh, raging against the uh, the machine of the capital, I right. guess you would say. Uh, so there, we we see more of our love triangle at the beginning. Uh, you know, Peter has feelings for Katniss. Gail has feelings for Katniss. Uh, we see throughout the film, Katniss has feelings for both of them in some way. Uh, but like you said at the start of it, it's there's a distance between Peter and Katniss that haven't really spoken or been around each other. Even though now they have houses that are, I think. 
Peter says 25 feet or 25 yards apart, something yeah. like that. Something like that, yeah. But they still like, have very little to do with each other after the game. So Peter's kind of in a place where he's kind of <clears throat> kind of hurt and like, was this real, was this not, you know, kind of thing. So uh, our love triangle is at the center of, the, of the, definitely the first act of this film. Uh, so as the victory tour begins, uh, we see Katniss and Peter uh, speeches. They kind of only spark kind of a deadly kind of uh, response from the Capitol uh, that leads to further unrest across the districts. So to, to maintain this uh, charade, Katniss and Peter announced their engagement uh, as well uh, as an attempt to kind of convince the Capitol of their love. However, President Stowe remains unconvinced, and Katniss uh, also meets the new enigmatic new headmaster, or game master, I should say, Plutarch Heavensby. What a name, huh? Yeah, what a name. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, of course, he's played by the late Philip Seymour Hoffman, who passed away during the film of a Mockingjay Part Two. Uh, Katniss returns home only to witness the brutal actions of Commander Romulus Thread and the Capitol's Peacemakers. I thought that guy did a really good job as being just a complete fucking asshole. Yeah, he was a crummy bastard. Yeah, so uh, he, he's getting kind of, Gail is getting publicly whipped after trying to kind of stop him from killing civilians, and it leads to kind of a confrontation between Katniss, Peta, and kind of Hamish, kind of trying to uh, you know, tamper down the situation a little bit. So, right. uh, you know, President Snow, he don't like that, though. He is not happy. Yeah, so President Snow can't have them seemingly defying the capital at all, Todd. So what does he do? He seizes the opportunity for this uh, upcoming 75th Hunger Games being a quarter quail, which kind of allows... Quick quicks? Yeah. Quick, quick. <laughs> Not quick quicks coffin, no. Okay. A quarter quail, uh, which kind of allows for a little bit of uh, change in the games, a little bit of modifiers. So he decides to put in this little, uh, little uh, wrinkle where uh, the uh, tributes are going to be from past winners. And since Katniss, of course, is the only female winner ever from District 12, she's automatically back in. And him and the new game maker are going to conspire to just try to get her bumped on off. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Katniss kind of makes a deal with Hamish. If uh, Peter's name is drawn, Hamish will volunteer his tribute. But in this case, Hamish's name is drawn and Peter volunteers his tribute. And like we learned from the first movie, once you say it, no takes his back. Yeah, you, once you volunteer, you're going. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so Katniss has her uh, pre-games interview with the Tooch. Back is <laughs> Bean Flickerman, as I call him, Caesar Flickerman. Uh, a lot more of that. <laughs> We're all so rich. <laughs> we love it here. <laughs> a lot of that stuff. Uh, so for her pre-games interview, Katniss wears a wedding dress as ordered by uh, President Snow. But Senna sets it to transform into a symbol of the Mockingjay. She kind of does her twirl on stage and kind of lights it on fire. Goes from a wedding dress to kind of a black Mockingjay dress. Really cool little scene. It was. Um, Peter lies during his interview claiming he and Katniss secretly married and are expecting a child in the hope that the Capitol will cancel the games. Of course, the Capitol doesn't, further inciting protests around uh, the districts. So what happens to Senna for uh, altering Katniss's dress type? Uh, as they're entering, or as Katniss is getting ready to enter the arena, she's going up in the little motorized tube thing. Uh, they Capitol guards come in to start beating the pure living shit out of Senna. I don't know if they beat him to death. They just beat him up and haul him off because she goes on up, and we're left to wonder. Yeah, and at I, least in this movie, yeah. what happened to him? Yeah, and I don't like I said it's been so long since I saw him walking Jerry Part One. I don't know if he he makes it or not. So I guess uh, we'll find out next week. Yeah. Uh, so the games begin. Uh, besides the obvious, our tributes of note are uh, Sam Claflin as Finnick O'Dare, aka Aquaman. Yeah, hey. walking around with his trident. and I think at one point he says he's like better in water or something like that. I can see him as Aquaman. Uh, Jenna Malone as uh, Joanna Mason. Uh, Jeffrey Wright as Beatty. Uh, Amanda Plummer as Wyrus. Do you remember seeing Amanda Plummer in anything, Todd? Is she looks face? awfully familiar, but I can't pay. The thing it down. I know her from the most is she's like um she's one of the uh cat the little diner robbers in uh uh Pulp Fiction. That's right. With that's her right. and Tim Roth. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I'll blow your fucking brains out. Yeah, that lady, yeah. that's her. I knew she looked familiar. Yeah. Uh you have Lynn Cohen as Mags, who's basically old lady cannon fodder. Uh, in this film. Right. Uh, and Jack Reacher himself, Alan Richson, as Gloss. Uh, and, you know, now looking at all these names and the, the names of the previous films, uh, I never thought about how all these names of these tributes sounds like they're on American Gladiators. I know, right? And now coming out, Gloss! <laughs> <laughs> it's like Gladiators, but to the death. Exactly. 
Uh, so what happens during the beginning of the games, Todd? So uh, we see uh, Katniss and Peta have kind of aligned with the District 4 tributes, uh, Fennec and Mags. Uh, they're making their way through the arena, and they get uh, – subjected to a lot of uh, game-induced challenges. There's like a uh, poison fog. Uh, mm-hmm. There's uh, mutant uh, mandrels. Uh, yeah. There's a humongous, humongous, humongous wave of water that, that strikes every so often. Yeah, I think there's like a big wave that comes in at a certain point. Uh, we, we see off in the distance, uh, there's a lightning that keeps striking a certain point on the map. Right. Uh, but, yeah, I really liked all the challenges we saw, especially the poison fog and those, like, monkey kind of mutt things. Mm-hmm. Like, again, I thought the effects were really good in this film. What about you? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I have no problem with any kind of effect that was in either one of these two movies. They all look top-notch. Yeah, I, like I said, I love the fog. I, I, lo- I love how... You know, all those, like, kind of boils and blisters they get all over them. And then, like, Katniss kind of figures out that, like, the water kind of washes it away, which is, again, a cool way to kind of get everybody back on track where yeah. you don't have your main character, your your star, your film, walking around looking like, you know, puss monster for the entire rest of the movie. Right. Um, so the group escapes to the beach. Uh, they meet up with uh, Beatty and Wyrus, uh, Jeffrey Wright and, and Amanda Plummer. Uh, tributes from District 3, and uh, they meet up with District 7 tribute uh, Joanna Mason. They discover that the arena is designed like a clock with uh, hazards occurring at regular intervals. They figure out if you stay within each wedge of the clock that o- only certain things happen at those specific intervals so they can just move from wedge to wedge to kind of stay safe when they figure out um, the time that each of them strikes. But the game maker turns that on its head and literally spins the entire arena around and kind of throws off that plan completely. Right. Uh, Wyrus gets killed by Jack Reacher. Uh, Katniss shoots him and kills uh, him while Joanna kills his sister, Cashmere. <laughs> oh, Georgie, I love Cashmere. <laughs> um, so what is the group's plan from there, Todd? So uh, BT has come up with this uh, plan to uh, use the, uh, knowing where the lightning is going to strike the tree to run this wire he's created from the tree to the water when uh, they're going to kind of leave the beach and let those other tributes kind of think the beach is open game, come on down and keep them down until that tree lightning tree tree gets struck by lightning and right. just execute the rest of them. Yeah, and I think that's something that's kind of set up in like the kind of the, the build up to the games. His, his character, it's kind of mentioned that that's how they won their games before. So he kind of electrocuted, I think, six other tributes before. Right. So it's something he's quite familiar with. Uh, so Katniss and Joanna start laying down the wire, but they're stopped by the tributes from District 2. Uh, Joanna cracks Katniss in the head and uh, she cuts out the tracker out of her arm and then just kind of flees and runs away. Katniss returns to the tree and finds an unconscious uh, James Gord laying there, yeah. uh, who has seemingly been electrocuted by touching the arena's force field. Unable to find Peta and hearing a cannon, Katniss almost kills Fennec, thinking he betrayed them, but he reminds her to remember who the real enemy is. Mm. Uh, so, Todd, take it from here. Tell us how Catching Fire ends. So from there, Katniss takes the uh, wire from the wire trap. Uh, she attaches it to her arrow. Uh, shoots it straight up into the ceiling of the arena just as that lightning strike hits. It blows out all the uh, circuitry. It blows out the force field over the arena. Uh, she's get blown back unconscious. Uh, we see a hovercraft come in to pick her up. Mm-hmm. Uh, on board the hovercraft, she's reunited with uh, Haymitch. Uh, uh, BT is there as well. He's still unconscious. And surprise, surprise, old Plutarch Heavensby is there. Yeah, yeah. And he is introduced to us as a rebel sympathizer against Snow and the Capitol. And uh, he tells her that, you know, she's started something. She's now part of this revolution and that there were several of the tributes that were going on getting her out and keeping her safe. And uh, they're on their way to District 13, which is now the new base for the rebellion. Uh, she kind of flips out, loses it. They kind of have to put her back under. Uh, she wakes up uh, with Gail, and uh, he's kind of trying to comfort her, and he's like, you know, don't worry, your uh, mom and your sister are fine, but uh, District 12 has been completely destroyed by the Capitol. Yep, absolutely, and that's pretty much where uh, the Hunger Games Catching Fire ends with Katniss kind of realizing that, kind of being scared and frightened of what happens, and you just see that kind of look in her eyes like, oh, it's on. <laughs> it's on yeah. now. Uh, so I'll ask you once again, Todd, what were your thoughts after watching The Hunger Games Catching Fire? Uh, you know, I, I really enjoyed this one. I think uh was kind of like a Star Wars The Empire kind of deal. Mm-hmm. I thought this second chapter was a little bit better than the first. 
you know, I really like the uh, 75th edition of the game is better than the 74th. I like the idea of the best of the best, you know, all the winners being thrown in there. I, I loved it. Yeah, that was a question I had for you, too. Which games were better, the 74th or 75th? I definitely think uh, the 75th. I think the ones we see in this, I think, were, were, were better. I think a lot more characters that we kind of cared about and uh, just a lot more kind of action and kind of cool elements kind of thrown at it. So I agree with you there. Uh, final question for you here. Are you excited to finish out the series by watching Mockingjay Parts 1 and 2? Honestly, I am. Like I say, I've, I've totally forgot this series. So after watching these first two, I'm I'm excited to kind of finish it up. Yeah, absolutely. Same here. I uh, these surprisingly uh, like how much I've kind of enjoyed these films. Like I I knew before like I liked them. I knew I, I they were not a it wasn't a series that I disliked at all. Like I just remember them being like okay. But on the second view, it I actually am really enjoying it. And I'm really looking forward to watching parts one and two because I don't remember anything about part one of Mockingjay and I did not watch part two. So I'm interested to kind of finish it out and see how it all wraps up. Uh, just some random notes I had here. Uh, about one hour in, you remember with the scene where Jenna Malone is stripping in the elevator? Oh, yeah. So uh, apparently that was filmed in a real glass uh, hotel elevator that was not closed off for production and guests could see in. Even though her nudity wasn't shown on screen, she did actually strip naked in front of Woody Harrelson, Josh Hutcherson, and Jennifer Lawrence during filming. Yeah, and if you hadn't saw this movie, uh, the look on Jennifer Lawrence's face during that whole elevator <laughs> scene, yeah, just watch it, it's priceless. <laughs> uh, at around 1 hour 45 minutes when shooting the scene where Katniss Finnick and Peta eat fish, the actors and actors were actually eating raw fish. Neither Jennifer Lawrence nor Sam Claflin uh, is particularly fond of fish, making it difficult for both actors to eat it. Lawrence had the hardest time, and Josh Hutcherson and Claflin found her struggle very amusing, apparently. <laughs> Uh, in the first movie, you know, PETA and Katniss's uh, training scores that you see, you get, they get like a, a 1 to 10 rating, and I think uh, they give Katniss an 11. She got an 11, yeah. So in this movie, you don't see what scores they got from their uh, their training scores, but in the books, apparently they both get 12s. Damn. They, uh, the only true to ever get 12s, it is suggested it's because the game makers want to punish them and make them targets for the other tributes. And while we're talking about that, I like that part in this one where she goes in to get her score. And I'm assuming it was the game maker that rigged this up. He's got that kind of drawing of Rue on the floor. You remember that? Yeah. yeah. I can't. It seems like I've read something about that before. I can't remember if it's the game maker or if it's PETA that does that drawing. Yeah. I think it's PETA that okay. does that drawing. Anyway, it pisses her off. And yeah. She just gets like a training dummy, pretty much hangs it in front of him, and I think she puts old Plutarch's name on it, right? No, it's Seneca. Seneca, the last one. Yeah, yeah. my mistake, but that's a badass scene. It she kind of gives a little curtsy. Yeah, exactly. Walks out. Yeah, that is a badass scene. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. What else do I have? Uh, in early scenes, we see Katniss wearing an unusual stylized woolen garment that she's kind of wearing. In the books, the capital requires victors to pursue a talent since they don't need to work anymore. Katniss initially struggles because her best talent is hunting, so Senna steps in and supplies her with garments that she can claim to have designed herself. Nice. Uh, Jennifer Lawrence said while filming in the arena, she hit herself with a bow mid-sprint and dove into a pool of jets, leaving her partially deaf for six days. Katniss actually went deaf in one year in the first book. Wow. <laughs> she really, very, very method actor, Jennifer Lawrence. She, Art imitating she, life yeah, right there. She deafened herself for this role. Uh, and the last note I had here, uh, it's kind of a semi-famous little video that went around. There was a press tour uh, that Liam Hemsworth and uh, Woody Harrelson were both on. And before the interview starts, you kind of see Chris, um, uh, that uh, Liam kind of mentioned that Chris is Liam's brother. And you, you see it kind of wash over Woody Harrelson that he never put together that Chris Hemsworth and Liam Hemsworth were related. Oh. <laughs> if you've never if you've never seen that video, go look it out. It's a, it's a great little video. Like they worked together on this film, they did all this stuff. They worked together on other films, and he just never put together that they. He, he never knew they were brothers. Yeah, that's cool. The Hunksworth brothers. <laughs> so Todd, give us your final thoughts and review score for the Hunger Games: Catching Fire. Uh, my final thoughts on this uh, second Hunger Games movie. Uh, like most good sequels, the stakes are higher. 
uh, the tension's a little more, the action's a little more, and I think that's why my score's a little more. I'm going to give this one a eight, which on our scale is great. Uh, like I kind of alluded to before, kind of a Star Wars, the Empire. Uh, this kind of ends on a cliffhanger. You know, District 12 is destroyed. Katniss is pissed off. And here we go. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, the Hunger Games Catching Fire, it's... It is more of the same, but it's kind of set against the backdrop of that potential revolution, which to me, you know, being more of the same, I'm not saying that's a bad thing at all. It's more of something that I liked. I, I really struggled going back and forth because I think this is a little bit of an empire situation, like where right. this one could be argued being a little bit better than the first one. But for me, I still gave The Hunger Game Catching Fire uh, an 8 out of 10, which ranks it as great. So, Todd, tell everyone how they can find us and stay up to date with us on social media. Uh, we are at Tail Capes on YouTube, Twitter, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. Sorry, uh, Tail Capes Podcast on Facebook. You can also email us at tailcapespod at gmail.com. Also, if you're so obliged, leaving us a five-star review on your podcast app of choice really helps the show. Popcorn Mumbles will return next week. We want to thank you so much for listening. Until next time, bye, guys. Later, guys.